Some great important issues that priests uh, bring up there in that video. And thankfully uh, on our show today, we have someone who can talk about some very issues that they had talked about as well. We welcome now Steve Gust, who is the director of Regina Cleary. And thank you so much well, for being with us. Thank Steve. you. Thank, thank you so much. Now, how long have you been at Regina Cleary? Uh, I'm, I'm aging in place <laughs> too, by the way. I, I've actually been there for 23 years, if you okay. can believe That's it. Great. That's I'm great. I'm getting a little gray. I'm, get, I'm getting a little gray. So. It, it gives you a more distinct. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um, maybe if you could just tell uh, us a little bit about Regina Cleary uh, for people who may not know. Uh, well, you know, Regina Cleary is located in the west end of Boston. It's been there for 52 years. Cardinal Cushing founded it really to continue the vocation of the priest, of the priesthood. And um, currently we have 54 residents there. Um, you know, for us, the most important thing is really looking at our mission statement. And our mission statement really is to continue that vocation, but also to focus on the needs of the health care needs of our senior priests. Um, and we're so blessed to have an incredible staff and the support of the clergy funds to operate the facility. And I noticed, too, when I was looking through the, the website, too, and the word community uh, jumps out, too. And talk about that, the community there. We are. We are a community. I, some people call it a fraternity. But um, <laughs> I think for us, I think that is a real challenge for, for our senior priests coming into Regina Cleary because they tend to have lived alone in a parish. They come into a community. I think there always is a, a, a challenging moment in those first three or four months. But what I find is, is um, the camaraderie comes around. And we, you know, we see priests really helping them do that transition. Um, most of them are so used to kind of doing their own thing. Um, I think a lot of times for them, um, by the, when they're coming in now, they're coming in because they need a little bit more help. Um, and accepting that help can be hard for a priest. Um, but over the, you know, over the first few years, they accept that. And I always say we have 54 generals <laughs> so, who, who all think they're in charge. So that community piece can be a bit of a challenge uh, in those first few months of, of arriving at Regina Cleary. Is that some, uh, the, the main challenge, you think? What are some of the other challenges that, that priests will find when they, they come and, so and do work? One of the things I've noticed is with, with the challenge of coming in is, is you know, specifically if they've come in from a parish and they've been the pastor. I've had situations where a priest comes in, he's the pastor, comes in, and all the people from the parish are helping him out. Yeah. They're there. They're helping him move. They're making sure that Father has, the, you know, all the, the secretaries there to make sure that, you know, he has the, the bright pictures in there. And then, you know, four or five months later, it starts to dwindle. Yeah. And the next thing you know, there's, they've connected to the new parish priest, and you don't see him as much. And that can be a challenging time for a priest. But what I think, I, what I love is, is that there is a community, and that community really starts in our chapel. You know, every morning we have an 8.30 Mass. Um, we're so blessed because we have 2,800 years of experience wow. celebrating Mass in the morning. Mm -hmm. And most of our men do help out, you know. And not all of our priests are able to continue to say Mass, um, but we really encourage if they can. And we'll do everything possible. So we have men that might not be able to step on the altar. Yeah. So we'll make sure that we have a small table in front that they can say, um, if they don't have to say a homily, if, if it's hard for them to do that, unless it's a day of obligation, um, if you want to just be reading, we'll just have you be a reader. But we do want to engage them. That's when we go back to that mission statement. Yeah. The idea of continuing their vocation is a critical part in, it's not just the health, it's making sure that they continue their vocation and continue their office as, as senior priests. Yeah. And do you find that too, Father, as well, with the piece that you deal with, just to be able to participate? Uh, I, I mean, it's very moving. There's uh, two morning masses at Campion Center where the Jesuits are. So there's the early birds at 6.30 and then the sleep-ins at 10. But, I mean, a lot of these guys are in wheelchairs, and we put a stole in them. And occasionally with some of the priests who maybe are not as cognitively intact as they once were, but then the time comes for the consecration, and boom, the hands up, this, that, and I just sort of go, it's still there. Yeah. Yeah, the same thing at Regina Cleary. You know, we have men that um, who really do need help getting down. They might be um, a nurse or a nurse's aide brings them down. But it's just amazing when the mass starts, they just become, they, it's all comes back and, and they remember everything. Yeah. There were some moments when we had the new mass. Oh. You know, it was, it was a bit challenging for some of But the thing that's nice about Regina Cleary, you can make a mistake and no one's going to notice it's it. It's not just the old priest who makes <laughs> mistakes with the new missile. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, one thing I do say to homily is, is it, but Regina Cleary, the homily has to be within five minutes or they'll start to hear knocking on the, on the <laughs> pews. Because breakfast, you know, we have two breakfasts and there's a group of men that like to get to their breakfast right after. So they're human. They, they like to make sure they get that mass done and go, go to breakfast afterwards. 
And you, you talked about a, a great thing too with the parishioners bringing in uh, a priest who is moving in too. But uh, talk about that sort of connection to uh, for, for priests that might be in there might not be able to get out to parishes. How important it is to maybe hear a word from their old parish it, or you know. you know one of the things we do is is we make sure that that front parking lot that we keep it open for visitors. Yeah. And we provide, and we'll say to any parishioner who wants to come and visit their senior priest, we'll provide a lunch for them. It's one of the things I will tell priests when they come in. I was meeting with a priest today. I said, just make sure that you let people know that you can, you can come here. This isn't the seminary, yeah. you know? Sure. <laughs> the doors aren't locked. Sure. Come in here, have a meal, join us, have a cup of coffee. Yeah. Um, I, I know sometimes people think, well, I don't want to go into Boston. but. The blessing that we have at Regina Cleary is we're on the west end of Boston. It's, it's, we're not deep into the city. We have parking for visitors so they can come and visit us. And I think it's really important if you have a priest out there that you know that's at Regina Cleary, come in and stop by. Yeah. Come to the Mass at 8.30. Have coffee afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. We talked to, uh, to Joe DiRigo last show, but uh, I wanted to talk to you about maybe, I know you've been there 23 years. Uh, what keeps you going? What maybe some per a personal story or a highlight uh, of the work that you've done uh, over the past 23 years at Regina Cleary? Yeah, I think one of the um, one of the most incredible experiences that I had was, you know, when I first came to Regina Cleary, I didn't build. It's hard to kind of build relationships. These men are already kind of, you know, they're not as cognitive, but you get to know them as you've been there for years. And I had a priest um, who passed away. Um, and he was on hospice, and to be with him at near the end of life, um, surrounded by, and I do want to kind of throw out the Sisters Disciple of the Divine Master. Um, they, we have two wonderful sisters, Sister Michelle and Sister Lucy, who are absolutely incredible. And to have them with us, have our chaplain and a priest surrounded around the bed, and really you know, praying with him as he is taken home to the Lord. Yeah. That is an incredible experience that I feel blessed uh, every time I go through that, it, it's all, it's not, we're not, we're not crying, we're celebrating. Yeah. Well, thank you so thank much, you, Steve, for being thank with you, us and, and sharing it. Thank you okay. for all your work and reaching okay. clear. Thank you. Too.